Kurdish forces and Iraqi federal police stand together at this entrance to Kirkuk, an unlikely alliance on one of Iraq's most important urban front lines. Further south is territory under the control of the Islamic State group and other Sunni armed forces. The two authorities on the ground here have long competed for control of this strategic city. Now they are facing a common enemy. On the surface, they seem to be coordinating. But this Iraqi policeman who asked us not to identify him says no one is in charge. The Iraqi army abandoned positions. Now the Iraqi police and Kurdish forces took control. But we don't really have control of the city. And we don't coordinate because there isn't one commander. Kurds have long believed Kirkuk to be their historical capital, but it had always been under Baghdad's control until June, when Iraqi soldiers retreated from advancing Islamic State group fighters. The Kurds stepped in and laid claim to the city. Months later, the central government is trying to reassert itself. The federal police are more visible in the streets. But there is still a power vacuum, and Kurdish neighborhoods are often targeted. Dozens of people were killed when a bomb went off here on Saturday. Bombings, kidnappings, they are common in this city. It is a dangerous place. It has been for many years. It is territory contested by Arabs, Kurds and the Turkmen. And now there is a new threat. Officials say the IS group has exploited Kirkuk's divisions, quietly establishing a presence in the city particularly in Sunni Arab neighborhoods, where there is deep resentment of the Kurds and the Shia-led government. The Islamic State, uh, what they call them, themselves Islamic State, uh, they have uh, some people working for him inside Kirkuk, and we still now, until now, uh, we're still uh, looking for him. All of Iraq's fault lines are on display in Kirkuk. Everyone has a presence here, but no one is in control. Zana Khudr El-Shazira, Kirkuk.